We need to talk. Do you know what this is about? Let me guess. It's about our van's flare? Yeah, or our uh, lack of flare, because I was out there counting and I only saw 15 pieces. Now let me ask you a question, Colleen. What do you think Tim at Storyteller Overland would think about an adventure van with only the bare minimum? Why don't you go ask your pretty boy Tim that question? Well, maybe I will. But besides, this flare is different. Oh yeah? How so? It's for space. What is up my dudes and dudettes? Behind that camera is Colleen and I am Todd and the sun is finally shining again in Northern California, which means we can get back to work on the exterior of our van. Speaking of which, you've probably noticed this giant chunk of fiberglass standing next to me here. This is a flare space flare and it's been beautifully color matched to the exterior of our vehicle. And with any luck, two of these, one on each side will be installed on our van today. Now, if you know anything about building a short wheelbase van like the Sprinter 144 behind me, then you probably already know what this is. But if you don't, this allows us to kick out the rear of the vehicle slightly so that we can put our bed sideways. What that does is saves about 16 to 20 inches of space in the front of the van, which is huge for these short wheelbase vans. I'd like to give a shout out to Trevor at Flare Space and Tim at Storyteller Overland for making this install possible. They hooked us up with a great deal on these flares and we are so excited to put them to use. So let's go ahead and install these now. My friends, it is time for a T-O-D-D-T-I-P. It's a top tip. Now, one thing we learned from the window install video is that although this body panel acts as a perfect template on where to cut, it actually helps a lot if you take a Sharpie and mark this back panel along that edge like so. Now you wanna make sure that the Sharpie is angled slightly downward so that when you look straight on, those lines are perfectly collinear. The reason why we do this is because there's quite a bit of space between these two panels. And when the air saw is pumping and chips are flying everywhere, that Sharpie line helps keep your blade flat and grounds your truth. We find that the edges end up being a lot cleaner and a lot straighter. The other thing we need to do is because there's no guide to follow across these pillars, we take a straight edge and we just mark across with the Sharpie. Let's go ahead and do those two things now. All right, so everything's been marked, but before we get to cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and put down some of this plastic wrap. I'm basically gonna create a little blanket across here just to kind of catch some of the metal chips and keep them out of all these cracks and crevices. There's no way to fully prevent this, but this does help. I used one half mil for this because it was cheap, but I'd probably go with something a little thicker in the future. The air saw chips are okay, but the larger ones that came from the drill process burnt right through it like a cigarette through a set of Motel 6 bed sheets. Yay! Aside from the prep on the inside of the vehicle, I also covered this exterior track with blue painter's tape. We have the automatic sliding door with a belt driven system. I just didn't want to have metal and everything in there. All right, we are completely prepped and ready to party. We are gonna be using the air saw to cut out these panels and this should come as no surprise if you've been following this channel. This is by far one of our favorite tools we picked up along this journey and coupled with the 32 TPI blades, this thing is the bee's knees. The crow's toes, the crab's abs, the fly's thighs. All right, let's get to it. I first start by drilling a pilot hole large enough for the air saw blade to fit through. I usually do this in one of the lower corners. 
and then I cut across the entire bottom line, slicing through the supports like they are cheese. Mmm, cheese. Oh, and then I cut up one of the sides and about halfway across the top. It's time for a Moonraker safety break. There is no substitute for your safety. I can't put it any more plainly. Tomorrow we want you to wake. So here's a Moonraker safety break. These cutting tools are no joke. They throw a lot of metal all over the place and they're super loud. Always protect your ears, always protect your eyes. Let's get back to it. Okay, that was a little weird. With a little tab left on the panel from the top, I have my lovely assistant hold the panel out from the van on the bottom. I finish the cut with one hand and hold the support with the other, passing it down to her after it's free. We change our blades after each cut and we have found that the name brand and 32 teeth per inch work best. And then we simply repeat the process for the passenger side or I guess the driver's side if you're in one of these countries. Man, how do we let these things happen? And how are we ever supposed to get along if we can't even decide on which side of the road to drive on? Sorry, focus. When handing the panel out to your lovely assistant, be sure not to let it go too early. Luckily, no lovely assistants were hurt and our security cam picked up the party foul. Here comes the handoff and oh, let's see that again. Clearly a mistimed handoff and boom goes the dynamite. Now that this panel has been removed, I'm gonna come back with this angle grinder with a sanding wheel on it and just clean everything up. A better suited tool for this job would probably be a belt sander, but I don't have one of those, so we're gonna go ahead and make this work. What I'm doing here is trying to knock down any high spots or wavy cut areas. You can see with the Sharpie line and the air saw that these are few and far between. You need to be careful if you use this method, these flap wheels can remove material surprisingly fast. After a once over with the angle grinder, you want to knock down any sharp edges and burrs. Hmm, that looks great. I think Rihanna would say, That's beautiful, like diamonds are in your file. Because it's a diamond file. Get it? With all the edges cleaned up and hopefully the terrible jokes finished for a while, it was time to prep everything for paint. I like to remove the metal chips from the seal with an air nozzle and a vacuum, fold up the drop cloth in on itself, and then try to clean every crack and crevice with the same method. Once that's finished, the last step is a spit shine with isopropyl alcohol. Now that everything's clean, it is prime time. We're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. I have this small can of rust bullet. I'm gonna be making another video where I take those panels we just cut out and test a lot of the common anti-rust paints to see which one is the best. This was one of the ones that was recommended on an auto forum. And why I'm using it on this project is because, well, I just like the name. I've also switched from a foam paintbrush to the dauber. I've been using these lately and I like these a lot better. So let's go ahead and put some paint down on these edges. I did two coats, two hours apart, and I made sure to cover all the exposed edges. All right, it is the next morning and the rust bullet has had a chance to fully dry. I will say hindsight 2020, that the dauber is not the right tool for this job. The rust bullet is quite a bit thicker than the primer we normally use. And what ends up happening is the little strands of wool get pulled out and embedded in the paint. I'm overall really happy with how the rust bullet goes on. It's quite thick and I think it's going to be really durable as well. I can't wait to see how the tests go in the upcoming video. Right now, we are ready to install the flares. Let's see what we need to make this happen. Now, Flare Space does ship the flares with three tubes of this adhesive. This is MS5510BK by Hankel. It's a silane-based adhesive and unfortunately for us, it was expired. If this happens to you, it's probably your best bet just to procure the same stuff, but we always like to make things a little bit more difficult than they need to be, so we're gonna go ahead and use Sika Flex 252. This is a urethane-based adhesive, and it has much better mechanical properties, but requires a little bit more surface preparation in order to bond the substrates together correctly. 
The first step of that is to mechanically clean with this Scotch-Brite pad. We like the maroon type best. You need to clean everything really well with mineral spirits. This is basically the distillation oh. of the souls of rocks. Sorry, ChatGPT wrote that one for me. And then you'll need to apply Sika Primer 207. We have these foam rollers that will help with that. And then the other thing we like to use is these urethane V-notch tips. This is already pre-cut in the appropriate V-notch, and then it has this nice little guide on the side that allows you to follow the inside of the flare so that the bead is in the perfect spot. And then for hanging the flares in space while they dry, we're gonna use this automotive refinishing tape. This is a little bit stronger than painter's tape, and this was recommended by Flare Space. So let's go ahead, get some adhesive down on these things, and finish this project. I prepped one flare at a time. Make sure you have something soft to lay it face down upon and follow these steps. This primer is crazy thin and a little bit goes a long way. Be sure to lightly touch the roller to the surface. Do not press or you'll squeeze the primer out like water from a sponge. While the primer on the flare was set to dry, I went to prep the van panel following the exact same steps as before. I highly suggest you hold the flare up beforehand to get an idea for where the inside of that lip will land. The primer on the panel proved to be precarious. You're finding gravity harder than John Mayer here. Light touches are your friend. I would not install flares without these two things, the CRL V-notch tips and a powered caulking gun. Make the investment, it's a must. Once you've wrapped the complete perimeter in caulk, the flare goes on. You need two people and we found that using the upper rear radius as your guide is the easiest way to get it positioned. You can then sight along the top and press it into the van. It's our proposition that you should pre-position the tape. You can still shift the position slightly in each direction here by sliding the flare, but once you're satisfied, you should press on the lip completely around the perimeter like so. And then you rinse and repeat for the other side. If any adhesive does squeeze out during this process, you can clean it up easily with mineral spirits and a rag. Once everything is taped in place and cleaned from the outside, it's time to head inside and finish and make sure things are fully sealed. Some adhesive is already squeezed out in here, but you'll want to add a bit more and fill it down with your finger or a popsicle stick, especially up behind the flares in the front. Wow, that was actually a huge pain in the butt. Working the sealant up behind the flares, especially in the front, was super difficult. What I ended up doing was I had this piece of rubber hose lying around and I extended the total length of the tip to about seven inches. But what this does is creates a lot of back pressure in the system and my caulking gun was struggling. So what I ended up having to do is kind of pulsing the trigger and kind of pushing the sealant in as I went. If I were to do this again, I would definitely look for a different solution. If I find one between now and when the video posts, I'll be sure to link that in the description below. This adhesive has had an entire week to cure, which means it's time to check for water tightness. But we're running into a little bit of a circular dependency here. In order to check for complete water tightness, the window needs to be installed. But in order for the window to be installed, upholstery needs to be installed. And if the upholstery is installed, we will not be able to see the leaks clearly. So what we're going to do is temporarily install the window, applying pressure from the outside while I spray and Colleen will be on the inside looking for leaks with a flashlight. We are in the middle of upholstering our flares. As you can see, the one on the driver's side is already done, but we figured we'd take a quick break and discuss some of the tools and supplies we're using to do this. First up, we have this quarter inch upholstery foam. Second, we have this Duramax Marathon fabric. We went with the gray mix color. I highly recommend 
getting yourself one of these color swatches. I'll link this in the description below. It's just great to see all of these in person. Colleen used this to design our layout and our scheme. Next, you'll need a nice sharp pair of scissors. I ended up buying these, but they weren't cute enough, so Colleen bought another one of her own set. We'll link both of those in the description below. We found an X-Acto knife and a Sharpie to be helpful, as well as this giant drywall square that we had left over from some of our home projects. Let's go ahead and see how we do the passenger side. We marked and cut both the foam and the marathon tweed. For the passenger side, we went with 60 by 27 inches, and for the driver's side, we went with 64 by 30. I'd probably add two inches in each dimension on the driver's side if I did this again, but since we're using the trim rings, it doesn't matter as long as we fully cover past the curves, which we did. After cutting the pieces, we took the quarter inch foam and lined it up along the top edge of the flare and tucked and cut and trimmed and tucked and rounded the corners until we were satisfied with the fit. There's a nice little recess on the flare around the bunk window that you can follow pretty easy with a sharpie. So we did this and then cut out that piece as well. Then while Colleen held the front in place, I started from the back peeling the foam out and coating both sides with 3M90 spray adhesive. We had originally planned on using DAP weld wood, but due to the nature of the concave shape of the flares, we settled on the ease of use of the 3M. We completed the bonding in three sections, rear of the bunk window, the length of the bunk window, and then forward of the bunk window. A couple things we found to be helpful was setting the 3M90 spray pattern to medium and having a piece of cardboard handy to block overspray and get those edges coated up real nice. And then we hit repeat following the exact same steps with the Marathon fabric. The very nature of it does require a bit more care when holding it in place, but for all intents and purposes, it's basically the same. Except for this little nugget I'm about to drop on y'all. Hey friends, still on the camera there? Hey, hey. It's super important to let this fully dry on both sides when you're doing the marathon fabric, because it likes to seep through if there's any excess adhesive. You can check for dryness with the official 3M sanctioned and approved knuckle method. What is the knuckle method? I'm glad you hypothetically asked, and I quote, Ahem! Test for tackiness by gently touching the adhesive with your knuckle. If the adhesive transfers to your skin, it's too wet. If the adhesive is aggressively tacky and does not transfer to your skin, it's ready to bond. If the adhesive is dry or only has a very light tack to it, it's too dry and another coat of adhesive should be applied to at least one of the surfaces. For cutting out the window on the tweed, it's super easy. We used an X-Acto knife with a sawing motion to make an exact, oh, what's the word, incision, resting on the flare as a guide. And then we installed the window. Colleen held it from the outside while I lined up the trim ring from the inside and partially screwed in a few screws with an impact driver. I then finished off the install by working my way around and tightening each of the screws a little bit at a time in a uniform and consistent manner. I will say these Premier product windows were not as easy to install as the CRL ones. They are truly self-tapping screws, so you have to apply quite a bit of force to get them started. Don't press out on the fiberglass flare completely. Instead, you can reach your arm through the window and press from the outside while you push from the inside. And then the last problem I ran into, this happened with one screw on each side, was that the slot didn't line up with the starter groove perfectly, so I had to take a drill bit and apply pressure sideways to open it up a bit. All right, we're gonna do one more thing for this install, but it's not gonna make this video because we need the temperatures to climb back up again. It's actually snowing here this week, which is super rare. And I blame myself because I got a little overconfident in the intro video, praising that the sun was back and I must have pissed off the weather gods and here we are at 35 degrees. But anyways, we have this double barrel caulking gun, which will be used to dispense this 3M two part 08323 seam sealer. What we're gonna do with this is actually dispense it in between these two panels so that this is one continuous joint. You have the inner wall bonded to the outer wall, bonded to the flare. This is actually the same stuff that they use in between the pillars and the previous panels that were here. 
It's completely unnecessary and it's just us going over the top again, but we did want you to know about it. All right, friends, that wraps up this episode of the Adventure Van Build Series. Fortunately for us, we were able to skip the final water test because it rained like crazy the last two nights and we have no leaks. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you have any questions, need any additional information or would like me to keep this mustache, drop a comment in the comment section below. And as always, on your way down there, don't forget to slap that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah?